One of Android's biggest benefits over the iPhone is the ability to manually install apps outside of the Google Play Store, and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello, welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell, and today I wanna to talk you through sideloading of apps. Maybe it's something that you take for granted, you've done it a million times. Maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's because you're probably getting all of your apps through the Google Play Store, which is just great. I mean, for, for most people, that's gonna be perfectly, uh, perfectly fine. All the apps are there. Google has security models built into it to be sure that you're protected as a user, that those apps aren't gonna mess up your phone or, or uh, steal your data, do all these things. That's what the App Store allows, not to mention uh, it allows Google to control the entire experience and have a whole lot of data on the back end about it as well. So it's good for Google, it's also good for users, but there are times when you might want an app outside of the Play Store. Take Fortnite, for example. Uh, just last week, Epic Games included a new feature into Fortnite that allows users and players to purchase different in-game in uh, items with currency that bypasses Google's currency model. And this is actually um, not allowed in Google's terms of service for developers. Uh, if, if developers are offering their app or their game through the Play Store, they kind of have to agree to the fact that any money exchange within the app is gonna filter through Google's system and they're gonna split the cost. It's like 30% revenue share with Google. Well, Epic Games decided, you know what, we don't like that, so we're gonna do this anyways. They did it, and ultimately what happened? Well, Google booted them out of the Play Store. Uh, Apple, consequently, also booted the uh, game out of the App Store as well. So Epic has a whole lawsuit right now, a whole antitrust thing that they're diving into as a result. Kind of seemed like that was one of the reasons that they were doing it in the first place. Uh, but that's just a guess. Uh, anyways, if you are an Android user and you want to play Fortnite and you've not installed it from the Google Play Store yet, well, you can do that still. Epic has always served up Fortnite through their website. You just have to know how to sideload apps. And thankfully, Epic actually makes it really easy for you. They walk you through the process. But I want to show you because it's a good example of how to take an install package, an APK file, which we'll talk about in a second, and install manually that app or game on your device outside of the Play Store. So we're going to dive into what, what to consider, uh, should you do it, and uh, then how to do it. So first of all, sideloading is, like I said, essentially it's a manual install of an Android app. Android apps are installed from a file format called APK or Android Package. And a person that wants to uh, sideload an APK needs two things. Well, first, of course, you need the APK file. You need to have that in order to load it, actually. And second, you need to change a setting on your device that will allow um, the manual install. It explicitly allows that manual install. Now, why number two? Why that second point? Well, because installing an APK actually means reducing the security model of your device. You're opening it up in order to allow for a third-party app that isn't cleared or checked by Google to be installed on your device. Uh, it could be an illegitimate file. It could be, you know, something that's that's harvesting data in some bad way. Uh, Google just doesn't know. And so they've built this into Android to make it so that you as the user have to explicitly decide to break that security model if you want to manually install an app. Um, so this does mean like you got to be really careful and really, uh, really trusting of the place that you're getting that APK file, right? You have to know that you trust the site um, the, or the user that's offering you that APK file. In other words, grabbing an APK off of a peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network, probably a pretty bad idea, probably a good way to end up with an app that has some uh, illicit code in there that might do bad things on your device. It could be viruses, malware, any of that bad stuff. Um, one of the protection mechanisms on your device is something called 
unknown sources. And this is the setting that we're going to dive into. Uh, and when you deactivate that to manually install the app, uh, that allows for any app to load whatever happens to be inside of that APK file onto your device. So you really do have to be careful. You don't want to load the wrong app. So who can you trust? Well, that really depends, and it's really entirely up to you to do your due diligence. Sometimes uh, a developer might offer up the APK file for their app or you know their game on their website like Epic Games is doing. Uh, Epic does this with Fortnite. You go to fortnite.com slash Android on your Android device, and it'll walk you through the steps, which I'll go through in a second. Or if you're searching for, say, an alternative app store, which is the case with Amazon's app store for their Fire uh, devices, well, Amazon, like app stores in and of themselves are not available through the Play Store. So you can't go to the Play Store and find Amazon's app store there. So you have to go to amazon.com slash Android app uh, on your Android device, and that'll walk you through the, the steps to install the Amazon App Store and then you know be able to use their apps instead of getting it through the Play Store. One of my favorite reasons, uh, getting an app before the update actually hits the Play Store because every once in a while, Google will push out an update to an app I love and I keep hearing all these great things about it, but it hasn't hit my phone yet. I can go to a site that I trust called APK Mirror. That's apkmirror.com. It's actually run by the folks who also run Android Police. Incredibly trustworthy. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can download that app from there and install it ahead of Google's like staged rollout. And I've done that many times and it's really nice. In all of these cases, I trust the people that are serving up the APK. But it's up to you to do your own due diligence and feel secure and comfortable in where you're getting that APK. Uh, in other words, it's the ball's in your court to determine that. I'm not going to determine that for you. All right, with all that out of the way, how do you do it? And let's take Fortnite as the example here because Epic Games really makes this very easy and straightforward. They kind of walk you through the steps like I'm going to do. So first of all, on your device, go to fortnite.com slash Android or the site that happens to be serving the APK. In this case, I'm going to tap the get it on the Epic Games app button. And once I tap that, it's actually going to prompt me to confirm that I want to download the file. It's going to say, you know, this file could harm your device. It doesn't know it's from Epic Games. It doesn't know that it's Fortnite. It's just saying, hey, when you sideload, you could harm your device, which is true. In this case, I trust Epic Games, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And with that, the APK file is saved locally on the device. And now I can tap the message that appears below that allows me to open the APK installation file. And this is going to fire off the next phase. Now, on Android 8 and above, there is a permission now that allows a specific app on the device to install apps from unknown sources. On Android 7 and below, uh, this used to be a blanket permission for all apps uh, on the device, but thankfully they did this on a per app basis starting with Android 8. So in this case, I tap to go into the settings for Chrome. I'm essentially going to say, yes, Chrome can do this. I'm going to choose to allow from this source the ability to install apps from unknown sources. And uh, from now on, I can download APKs from unknown sources using Chrome. The door is essentially wide open at this point. And we will talk about closing that door later. Now I'm going to go back. And now I'm asked if I wish to initiate the install of this APK onto the device, uh, which I do. So I'm going to tap to install. And that's really it. It does what it needs to do. I can now open the Epic Games app store from within there, which is essentially what I installed on my phone. And then you see, I can just tap to download Fortnite. It's all managed entirely within that app. Um, and not only that, once the Epic Games app finalizes the download of Fortnite, once again, what do you expect is going to happen here? It's going to ask for permissions to install that APK because I gave Chrome permission to do this. I didn't give the Fortnite App Store app permission to do this. So uh, more and more, it's these permissions that kind of make sure that there are double checks in place to be sure I don't do something I didn't mean to do. So no app can download and install an APK file without explicit permission by you, the user. And that's a really important thing to know. 
So another consideration, I mentioned earlier APK mirror uh, just a few minutes ago. APK mirror, for me, it's, man, I love it. It's a comprehensive resource for APK files. There are so many there. It's not a directory for pirated apps or content. It might look like it could be, but it's absolutely not. They don't host anything like that. It's an APK directory with legitimate and completely untouched files. And the site itself has many uses. If you've not heard of it before, it stores a history of an app's updates. So that app that you just love, that uh, recently pushed out an update that you hate, you can now revert to an older version so you don't lose features or you get back to an old UI, that sort of thing. If an app is released by, I don't know, Google, let's just say, and it's on a rolling update schedule, like I said, it hasn't hit you yet, you can get it earlier on APK Mirror before the update is pushed to your device. I use it for that all the time. If an app isn't available in your region on the Play Store, you can find it on APK Mirror and install it from there and uh, just get it right away, even though it's not offered to you through the Play Store. Also, the app addresses a relatively new aspect of APK files, and that's something called bundles. Now, bundles were introduced just a couple of versions ago, back in 2018. And the idea with uh, with app bundles is that it breaks down apps into pieces and only the pieces that match up with the configuration of your hardware is delivered to your phone. And the idea here is that there's so many different configurations of Android devices out there. Apps before this were just uh, you know, required to have support for everything in them, which made the file size larger, took more time, used up more data, uh, all that kind of stuff. So app bundles allows the uh, Google Play Store to serve only the pieces that matter to this particular device. So it brings that file size down, makes it faster. It also complicates things as far as in installing uh, APK files. Well, APK Mirror has a solution for that. If you go to the Play Store and find the APK Mirror app and install it, this app is not a directory of the APK Mirror website. It is merely an installer that knows how to install all different types of APKs. So what you'll do is you'll go to the Chrome browser on your device and open up apkmirror.com, look for that app that you want to install, and you know keep in mind that the site hosts different versions of each APK file. It can be a little confusing to know which one is for your specific device configuration, and the good news here is that even if you download a, an APK and it's not compatible with your device, it just won't install. So it's not gonna install something and then like break the app's function on your phone or anything like that. It's just not gonna install if it's not right, but you can do a little research and you can find the right one. You just download the APK for your app. If it happens to be able to be a bundle, then the APK Mirror uh, app is going to know how to install it specifically for your device. And if it's not a bundle, it installs the exact same way. For you, the user, you just select APK Mirror as the installer destination, and it does all the work for you. And I will also say uh, APK Mirror is ad supported. Uh, so, you know, cut it some slack. It's all good. Now, finally, it's important to take a look again at the security model that we broke here. We've installed the app, let's say, and in the process, we gave Chrome or the Epic Games app or whatever, we gave these things explicit permissions to kind of open that security door and leave it open. So now we want to close it up, right? If we don't need it right now, it's probably best from a security standpoint to close it up. So uh, once you've installed that APK file, all you got to do is go into settings, apps, and then in this case, like Chrome, whatever app it is that you gave the permission. And then in Chrome, I go to advanced and then find the section that says install unknown apps. I can go in there and uncheck it. And once I've done that, it's like that security door is closed again. We are good to go. All right. So you might not use this all the time. Like I said, for the majority of people, the Google Play Store is good enough. But there are reasons where you might want to install these apps outside of the Play Store. Fortnite's a pretty darn big reason. There's so many players of this game not being available through the Play Store. People are gonna wanna install it on their Android device. And uh, it's not difficult. There's just certain things to consider. So I hope this has been a little helpful in understanding what could go wrong, let's say, with a, with a bad file that you're installing being certain, being sure that you're getting these files from a trustworthy source 
And, uh, you know, the process itself is really pretty easy, as you can see. So I hope this is helpful for you. Send me your emails, your uh, tips and tricks for Android. I love to read all of them, and sometimes they make it into the show, HOA at twit.tv. You can find the website at twit.tv slash HOA for hands-on Android. That's where you can subscribe in audio and video formats. You can link out to your podcatcher of choice, as well as linking out to YouTube if that's where you prefer to watch. Make sure and subscribe while you're over there. I'm Jason Howell, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to John Ashley for editing, and uh, we'll see you all next week on Hands On Android. Bye, everybody. Be sure to check out the other shows on the network, like my other show, Hands On Wellness. I love to share different tips and tricks that's going to help you get a better grasp on your personal wellness. Just go to twit.tv slash how and subscribe now. 